To begin to lay out a smooth desert like in the Sahara Desert, it is best to figure out the overall look you are after and model after a real world reference because there are several formations and wind patterns that lay out sand dunes. We'll be sure to cover a few different methods to get you started. For the first method, we are going to start out with adding the directional balloon filter, a very powerful filter that deserves its own episode to be honest. Set the direction to the lowest number to shrink in our effect so we have a good peak. Since the direction is negative one, the horizontal and vertical angles are essentially neglected and that's okay. We won't necessarily use them. Set the affected steepness to the max since we want all the slopes to take effect. Set our length to five and smoothness to at least 0.8. Next thing we wanna do is let's duplicate this filter so we can double its effect. We have now what looks to be a good start to our base uh, dune shape. Next, we are going to do our sediment, which should technically be the last filters in the filter stack, but I want to see what our dunes are going to look like while we're editing all the different noise and adjustments for our terrain pattern. So go up and add the sediment filter. Once added, set the strength to 100, or you could do about 90 or 80, depending on what type of level of sediment you want, but we're just gonna do 100. Set the length to one so it can be very smooth on a small scale. Then set the quality to about 12 so that our sediment is of a higher smooth curve. With our length set to one, the quality slider isn't a huge deal, but it's nice to have. You could stop there on sediment, but I'm going to add sediment complex so we can see areas where the sand has slid down the slopes and piled up near the base. So once the sediment complex filter has been added, set the strength also to 100 the length higher so it contributes a larger area to collect. Setting it lower will just make it seem like nothing has changed at all. So let's set ours to around 40. Then set the quality to about 12 since we want a good bit of um, tessellation, so to speak. Lastly, let's set, make sure our operation is set to max if it's not already set that way. You could mess with the strength sliders to cut away areas if you want, but I'm just going to stick with the default uh, levels for now. If you need the ridged line at the peak to not be so sharp, add smooth ridges, set the strength to be around 70, and start off with a length of two, then move up to your desired smoothness. For the purposes of this guide, I'm gonna keep mine off because I really want my peaks to be super sharp. Next, let's add a wind filter because after all, the wind is what's pushing the sand to those formations. The filter is good to stretch out the dunes and smooth them out in a given direction. So once added, make sure the strength is somewhere around 80. Have a good length of around five to 15. Let's set ours at 12. And then I'm gonna make sure our direction is at an angle of 135, so it's a good diagonal across our terrain. And let's also make sure our step levels five and seven are the only ones that are active because that produced the best results for what I am after. Now the next filter we need to make sure we add is the noise filter. This is going to add the largest contributing factor to our terrain's effect. Noise will be the main structure to how our underlining peaks and valleys are patterned. So once added, let's start off with our scale at around six. Let's make our height at 40. Then let's adjust our level strength, which changes the biggest part of this filter. I'm going to set level four at 10, level five, six, seven to 100. If we were to change the scale to about 12, let's go ahead and do that, then we, will, then we may want to lower the height a tad and adjust our strength steps a little bit. Or we can simply add a dune filter to help balance everything out, plus sharpen our peaks. Next, let's take our noise and distort it a bit some to give it a little bit of a wave. We're going to use the distort filter for this. So once added, set the strength to around 60. Lower the length to about 200 because we don't want it to contribute to a super long um, value or a super low value because then it'll look too wavy. We just want it to be some smooth curve. So somewhere in the middle is pretty good. Then our scale needs to be on a larger scale. So that means set the slider to around 20. The lower the value, the higher uh, the scale is that the store is stretched out. And the higher the value, the more small details appear up on screen. Once we have those set, we need to adjust our strength slider some since this will be the biggest output that we could see. I'm just gonna go uh, fly through some of these settings real quick and you could pause the video to see what I've done as I'm changing a good bit of them. And I came up with these numbers through mostly trial and error. So play around with it to get the look you're after. Mind that the lower level steps are going to change the largest amount of detail as we've learned and the higher level steps are going to affect the smallest level of detail. 
So what we're wanting to do with distort is affect most of the larger amounts of detail and a little bit of the small detail. So that's why you see levels three through five at 100 and the other levels a little bit um, degraded from there. And why not? Let's uh, go ahead and make the last thing that we're going to add is a smooth sand texture. Now I'm going to be using a Megascans texture by Quixel. So let's go to the Megascans library at Quixel.com, select the free tab, and scroll till you see the bright desert sand texture. This is a great starting texture for making sand dunes, and it's free on top of that. So go ahead and select the texture, change the download settings to at least 4K, and for World Creator 2 sakes, make sure to download just the albedo, displacement, and normal textures. You can go ahead and download the other ones since it's already free right now, but we're only going to be using those three textures in World Creator 2. Back in the program, once we have that, go to the texture tab, add, create a new texture, Select each appropriate box below to have to search and input your downloaded texture. Then hit add and close. And let's, and we're going to need to change the texture size up a bit. Around 40 is good. Now we have a pretty decent desert landscape. From here, it is all about the noise and shape of your terrain, which is best affected between the noise, distort, and wind filters, which will drastically affect the look and style of your desert. There are, of course, I'm sure other filters that could replace or go in conjunction with the filters that we used in this video, one of which we will cover in the second video right after this one. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.